Welcome and thank you for watching this presentation on improving facility EQRS data submission compliance. We will cover the key topics that will help your facility stay compliant with CMS guidelines and requirements. Let's start with a brief EQRS overview. Once certified by CMS, dialysis facilities and transplant centers are mandated by the CMS conditions for coverage to maintain EQRS which is the ESRD Quality Reporting System, also known as the ESRD Patient Registry. In EQRS, facilities will track patient location, treatments, demographics, and modality information, will record clinical information, including ICH caps, depression screenings, vaccinations, hospitalizations, nursing home information, and telemedicine reporting as well as submit 2728 and 2746 forms. The network assists facilities with EQRS compliance by providing facilities with CMS information, including schedule updates and patient level EQRS data in the form of network developed reports. This presentation will provide your team with the steps and processes you can use to stay compliant with CMS requirements. It is important for the network to have the most current contact information for EQRS facility personnel so that the reports we send can get to the right people quickly. We will talk about how to maintain personnel after a few more slides. The networks are required to report facility progress to CMS on a monthly or sometimes weekly basis. This is why it is important for facilities to stay up to date on network communication and to have staff at the facility who are assigned to maintain EQRS. The network will also be selecting facilities for targeted technical assistance among those who are not making continuous improvements in EQRS compliance and require facilities to conduct process improvement plans to identify ways they can improve their EQRS reporting. Detailed information on CMS expectations are located in the CMS EQRS Data Management Guidelines, which can be found on mycrownweb.org. Before we continue with EQRS, a brief but important reminder to facilities is that we must always strive to prevent security violations. When emailing or opening a support ticket with the network for assistance, never include any PHI or protected health information nor PII, or personally identifiable information of any patient. Sending this type of patient data electronically puts the information at great risk, and the network must always notify CMS whenever this happens. Please only use the UPI when emailing the network or when opening a fresh desk ticket. Please make sure that all facility staff are aware of this and that any new staff who join your team are taught to understand this process as well. Now let's return to EQRS and start with the dashboard. The network and CMS are aware that the dashboard is not always accurate. Sometimes it shows things that are due that are not actually due, but most of the time, it's the best place to identify discrepancies that need your attention. Please review the dashboard daily and look at every item that is posted. If you believe that something on the dashboard is incorrect, please submit a ticket to the CMS help desk so they can group it with other similar tickets and focus on fixing the things that are causing the most problems for facilities first. So please review and resolve dashboard items regularly and report any errors to the CMS help desk. The network understands that there are ongoing challenges, so just do your best with your EQRS features that are provided. The dashboard will help facilities identify which 2728s are due. Please focus on the initial 2728 because the supplemental and re-entitlement 2728s are the ones that are most often incorrect on the dashboard. Review the network instructions available in Knowledge Base for timeliness, definitions, 
purpose and process for completing the various 2728 forms. 2746 forms are to be submitted within 14 days of the patient's date of death, which is to be entered on the demographics page in EQRS. You will not see the 2746 until the date of death and cause of death has been entered. After 30 days of being discharged from the facility, you will not be able to enter the patient's date of death and cause of death, so please open a fresh death ticket with the network and we will assist you. Simply include the UPI and code of death and the date of death in your ticket. And remember, do not include any PHI or PII. Similar to the part that was historically completed each month by facilities in Crown Web, the network is providing instruction for facilities to review the EQRS patient roster verification each month to identify any discrepancies with patient records. Start by going to the reports tab to locate the patient roster report. Select the last day of the prior month to include all patients that are admitted into your facility as of that date. For example, if today is August 2nd, you would enter the date of July 31st to show all patients in your facility at the end of July. Once the report is completed, open it and compare it to your internal facility tracking to make sure all patients that should be admitted have been admitted and all patients that have been discharged were correctly done so in EQRS. If you notice that a patient is missing from the EQRS report, work with your batch system to determine why they were not imported into EQRS. And remember, acute patients should not be in EQRS, so please do not look for them on the report and do not admit them into EQRS. If the patient is in fact ESRD and needs to be admitted, do so on the patient admit page section. If you run into a possible duplicate near match error, please submit the newly designed network form, the link to which can be found in the knowledge base, and the network will admit the patient into your facility in EQRS for you. You do not even need to open a fresh desk ticket, simply submit the secure form and we will take care of it within two business days. And please remember, the faster that a patient is admitted into EQRS, the more quickly the 2728 and 2746 can be submitted, all of which contributes to CMS data compliance. If you identify a patient on the report that should not be on the report, go into the patient's admission record in EQRS and add or fix the appropriate discharge information. If you notice the patient appears twice on the roster report, it can mean a few things. The patient may be admitted into your facility recently, but there is no discharge information for when they left your facility previously. Go into the admissions tab and make sure there's discharge information for when the patient left your facility in the past. The other option is that the patient may have two different UPIs. If this is the case, submit a ticket to the CMS Help Desk requesting that the two UPIs be merged. Make sure that the patient records are identical and that the Help Desk has enough information about what you are requesting so that they may assist you. But please note, merge requests can take several weeks to be resolved so it is better to request assistance from the network when getting a near match or possible duplicate error than to accidentally admit the patient twice into your facility and wait for the merge to be completed. The network believes that reviewing the patient roster report is an important monthly activity for facilities to do regularly to make sure that patient data in EQRS is as accurate as possible. We are requiring facilities to complete a monthly verification that this activity was completed in EQRS by answering a few brief questions in iProLearn. And please note, the EQRS patient roster report can also show inaccuracies. Please do not worry about fixing the report. Focus on fixing any patient records that you identify to be incorrect. 
report your findings as best as you can in IProLearn. Now let's review the patient events report, which is also in EQRS. You may already be familiar with this report from working on the 2744 Annual Facility Survey. It is also located in the Reports tab in EQRS, and it asks you to enter a start date and end date for the report so you can review all events within that time period. Once the report is completed, download it and remove the first three rows of the Excel file so that you can apply the different sorts and filters to the data. Start by sorting the patients by admit reason to make sure every patient is admitted correctly and with the correct admit date. Then sort by discharge reason to make sure the reasons and dates are accurate as well. Make all corrections in the EQRS patient record and not on the Excel file. Other cleanup activities to do off of this report include resolving any system discharges, fixing any date of deaths that does not match the discharge date of death, filling in any blank discharge subcategory in the QRS admissions, removing any dialysis in support of transplant admissions, since there should not be any transient admissions in EQRS, and making sure that a patient's very first dialysis admission is new ESRD so that the 2728 can be submitted on time. Please note, it is important that any corrections you make in EQRS are also made in the batch system. Otherwise, the batch will overwrite the EQRS data and all your corrections will be gone. By conducting these cleanup activities each month, you will have a much easier time completing the 2744, and you will receive fewer cleanup reports from the network, which we will talk about next. As you know, the network receives CMS EQRS data, which is then formatted into facility-specific reports and distributed to the contacts we have on file. Your team may already be familiar with some of these reports as we try to send them out weekly and or monthly as appropriate. Facilities are expected to take immediate action to each UPI on the reports in EQRS, since incorrect data can have negative impact on the patient's Medicare coverage and transplant waitlist status. There's no need to notify the network once corrections have been made. We will know that when we run the next round of reports. If you do need assistance or have questions about a report, please open a fresh desk ticket and include the UPI and the name and date of the report you received from the network so we can best be able to assist you. Some important notes about EQRS. Though not required fields, the patient's race, ethnicity, and address should be filled out or the 2728 will not appear. On the demographics miscellaneous section, the date of death and cause of death should be filled out or the 2746 will not appear. And as mentioned earlier, you will not be able to add date of death and cause of death information after 30 days of the patient being discharged from your facility. So simply submit a fresh death ticket and we will do it for you if you include the UPI, the code of death, and the date of death. The newest EQRS report we sent is the Network EQRS Data Quality Compliance Report. CMS has designated EQRS as a quality improvement activity for the next five years. CMS will be monitoring network-wide performance in each of the following measures. First, patient admissions into EQRS within five business days of the treatment start date. This means that if the patient started at your facility on January 1st, you need to get them admitted into EQRS by January 6th to be considered on time. Second, initial 2728 forms are to be submitted in EQRS within 45 calendar days. All patients admitted as new ESRD require an initial 2728 form which is why it is so important to have the admit reason 
correctly reported on time. The due date is based on the date the patient started at your facility, and you can monitor when the form is due in the 2728 section of the patient's record. And third, the 2746 forms are to be completed within 14 days of the date of death entered in the patient demographics page in EQRS. If you do not know the patient's cause of death, you may use co code 99. Be sure to add the discharge information into the admits discharges section as well. This new monthly compliance report that we had sent shows these three key measures and what percent of each were completed on time by your facility. Please note that based on the way CMS is calculating these rates, each month's rate includes the total rate from the last 12 months. So a patient's form that was submitted late in July will be counted in the rate until the following July. Strive to reach 100% for each measure but please focus on getting the rates to improve from month to month. To summarize, you can improve your facility compliance rate in EQRS by submitting and maintaining patient EQRS data daily, reviewing the dashboard and the network sent reports with your team regularly, maintaining regular and accurate contact information with the network, and conducting cleanup activities using EQRS reports. To conclude this training, here are a few ways that the network is able to assist facilities in improving and sustaining a strong compliance rate. First, when you try to admit a patient into EQRS but receive the possible duplicate near match error, submit the possible duplicate or near match patient form and the network staff will review and admit the patient into EQRS within two business days. Transplant centers have a similar transplant event form that they use to request network assistance admitting transplant patients in EQRS. It is important that the network has the most current contact information for your facility staff. If contact information is not up to date, your team will miss important emails. This link can be used by facilities at any time to notify the network of key personnel changes, and it can be found in the knowledge base and in iProLearn for easy access. The customer support portal is the fastest way to connect with network staff who can best assist you with all things quality improvement and EQRS. Follow the knowledge base for answers Browse the knowledge base for answers to frequently asked questions and open a new support ticket if you would like one-on-one -on -one assistance. Please remember to only provide the UPI when submitting a ticket. Never include PHI nor PII in your ticket. This concludes our training on how facilities can improve EQRS data submission compliance. Thank you for watching.